In a thrilling twist of fate, the despised cockroach of the sea, and once considered a meal for the less fortunate, lobster, has emerged as the undisputed king of the culinary world. With a market value soaring to an astounding $6 billion, lobster has triumphed over its humble origins, captivating the taste buds of connoisseurs worldwide. Once confined to the plates of prisoners and servants, lobster now reigns supreme, commanding respect and admiration. Its remarkable journey from lowly fare to a luxurious delicacy is a testament to its undeniable allure and culinary prowess. Get ready to dive deep into the mesmerizing story of the lobster and emerge with a newfound appreciation for this remarkable creature. The story commences during the latter part of the 8th century, a time marked by Viking raids along Europe's coastline. Fishermen, driven by advancements in boat design, ventured further into the profound and obscure waters. These newly crafted vessels were exceptionally suited for deep-sea fishing and coincided with the emergence of meat-free religious observances. However, according to the church, seafood such as fish and lobsters were not considered as meat substitutes. Consequently, they became a desirable alternative. Only the wealthiest individuals could afford to have lobsters swiftly transported from the fishing boat to their kitchens, ensuring their freshness before spoilage. Lobsters acquired a reputation in Europe as a symbol of affluence and privilege. It was often depicted in paintings as a display of wealth. However, the situation was strikingly different in the Americas. On the shores of the New World, piles of lobsters reaching up to two feet high, would regularly wash ashore. They were abundant to such an extent that Native Americans not only consumed them as a protein source, but also utilized them as a fertilizer and bait for fish. As colonists settled in the region, lobsters lost their value and became known as a meal for the less fortunate. They were even fed to prisoners and servants, earning the label of poor man's food. Servants, who stipulated in their contracts, refused to consume lobster more than three times per week. Urban legends circulated, suggesting that prisoners considered lobster meals to be an exceptionally cruel and unusual punishment, leading to prison riots. This perception stemmed from the improper cooking methods employed at the time, which caused lobsters to spoil rapidly, resulting in people unknowingly consuming rotten meat. During that era, lobsters were prepared after being killed, much like any other type of meal. However, what people failed to realize was that when lobsters were killed, they released an enzyme that accelerated the decay process in the rest of their body. This enzymatic release caused the meat to emit a foul odor, acquire a mushy texture, and develop an unpleasant taste. Consequently, lobsters acquired a notorious reputation as the cockroaches of the sea. The stigma associated with consuming lobsters was so strong that individuals would discreetly dispose of the shells, fearing judgment from others who might catch them eating such fare. Nevertheless, over time, lobsters slowly reclaimed their former status as a symbol of wealth and privilege. During the early 19th century, a French chef and innovator named Nicolas Appert devised a technique for preserving food through a process known as canning. This method entailed placing food inside a securely sealed bottle or jar, which was then subjected to heat to eliminate bacteria and ensure sanitization. In the subsequent year, an English inventor named Peter Durand enhanced Appert's approach by introducing tin coated cans as a replacement for the sealed bottles or jar. The practice of canning gradually spread from Europe to the United States. Decades later, a cannery in the United States established an assembly line specifically for processing lobsters. Despite encountering some initial obstacles, they soon pioneered a trend that led to the emergence of a thriving industry complete with competitors vying for success. 
As canneries emerged, fishermen began transporting lobsters back to their homes and preserving them by canning. Meanwhile, railway managers devised a scheme to introduce lobsters to unsuspecting passengers who were unaware of its previous reputation. They marketed lobster as a rare luxury item, and passengers not only believed this claim but also developed a fondness for it. Some passengers even started requesting lobsters when dining out. During this period, chefs discovered that lobster appeared and tasted delightful when boiled alive. Consequently, the demand for lobster surged, causing prices to skyrocket while the supply dwindled. Overfishing, exacerbated by a lack of regulations during the Great Depression, severely impacted lobster populations. The affordability of lobster became nearly non-existent for most people. However, with reduced pressure to catch lobsters, fishermen began hauling in smaller catches, enabling lobsters' population to gradually recover. Unexpectedly, the fate of lobsters took another turn during World War II. The Canadian government actively encouraged civilians to consume surplus foods like lobster instead of rationed items to support the war effort. Magazines made patriotic appeals, emphasizing the importance of consuming lobster and shared a plethora of recipes for various lobsters dishes. Meanwhile, in the United States, lobsters was already regarded and continued to be classified as a delicacy. It became the sought-after dish for movie stars during their outings, a centerpiece at parties hosted by billionaires like the Rockefellers and a preferred choice for weddings among newly wealthy families. Presently, lobster is widely recognized as a culinary delicacy, ranking just below the caviar in prestige. Despite any increases in supply, prices for lobster remain high. One contributing factor to the elevated prices is the intricate logistics involved in lobster fishing. Fishermen employ bait and traps that must be carefully lowered to the ocean floor. However, a trap filled to capacity does not necessarily indicate luck for the fishermen. Due to regulations, they often find themselves obligated to release tons of lobsters back into the ocean. For the lobsters that can be retained, their claws are secured and placed on ice before being transported back to shore. Subsequently, they must be kept in saltwater tanks to maintain their vitality until they are shipped live. During transportation, the lobsters require adequate cooling, moisture, and sufficient oxygen levels to ensure their survival. The various factors involved in the distribution of lobsters contribute to increased cost, thereby keeping lobsters prices high. Additionally, maintaining the perception of luxury plays a role in sustaining elevated prices. Studies indicate that people often associate price with quality and derive greater pleasure from products that are more expensive. While high prices can deter some customers, there is a general suspicion towards cheaper products. Consequently, even during times of a bountiful lobster harvest when wholesale prices may be reduced, many restaurants choose to maintain high prices to uphold the luxury image of lobster and to make the other menu items appear more reasonably priced. Despite being aware of these factors, some customers may still be delighted to indulge in lobster. However, reports suggest that a lobster shortage may be on the horizon. Herring and mackerel which are used as lobster bait, are now scarce due to overfishing in the United States. In response, the New England Fishery Management Council has mandated a significant reduction in the catch of herring, amounting to approximately 77% less compared to previous years. In Canada, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans has taken measures to close down herring and mackerel fisheries in certain regions. As a result, meat prices have risen by up to 50 cents per pound, which is a significant increase. This price surge is noteworthy, considering that an average fishing boat typically consumes around 500 pounds of bait per day. In addition to these challenges, some countries have implemented bans on boiling lobsters alive. Activists argue that boiling lobsters alive is inhumane, citing the belief that lobsters can experience pain. 
However, a researcher has countered this argument, stating that lobsters' brains lack the capacity to process pain, and the evidence supporting their ability to feel pain is weak. Although Switzerland allows stunning of lobsters before boiling, this process requires specialized equipment that can be quite costly, often amounting to thousands of dollars. Despite facing numerous obstacles, the lobster market has achieved remarkable success. Presently, it boasts a value of 6.3 billion and is projected to surpass 11 billion in the near future. This transformation of the lobster from being derogatorily referred to as the cockroach of the sea to evolving into a sought-after gourmet delicacy exemplifies the captivating journey behind one of today's most significant industries. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Business Central. We hope you enjoyed delving into the fascinating world of business with us. Remember, the journey doesn't end here. Stay connected with us. Like, comment, subscribe to our channel, and click that notification bell so you won't miss a video. Stay inspired, stay informed, and keep making waves in the world of business. See you in the next one.